Hello guys! Welcome to our modular learning augmented by this video lesson for the subject Basic Calculus. We are now on quarter 3, week 1, and of course, this is the third lesson. I'll be your teacher, Sir Moises S. Flores, and I am inviting you to watch. So I discuss with you the topic on the different laws on limits. Make sure to have with you your module, your pen, and of course, your answer sheet. Are you ready? Tara! ML na tayo! For our learning competency, it says here that we are going to illustrate the limit loss which could be found on our milks. Okay, for us to have an idea or an overview of our lesson, I'll be presenting some questions that we are to answer later on after our discussion. Okay, let's try. The first question is, which of the following laws describe the given formula? We have the limit of f of x over g of x as x approaches a is equal to the limit of f of x as x approaches a all over the limit of g of x as x approaches a. Our choices, is it the limit of product of functions, limit of quotient of functions, limit of sum and difference of functions, or is it the limit of root of functions? Okay, next question. Which of the following laws states that if n is a positive integer, the limit of that nth root of a function is just the nth root of the limit of the function, provided that the nth root of the limit is a real number? Our choices, is it limit of product of functions, limit of quotient of functions, limit of sum and difference of functions, or the limit of root of functions? Third guide question. You are asked here to determine the limits of x squared minus 4x plus 3 all over x minus 1 as x approaches 2. Our choices, is it negative 1, 1, 2, or negative 2? Again, you are asked here for the fourth guide question to solve for the limits. The square root of x cubed minus 2x squared plus 5x all over x plus 9 as x approaches 3. Our choices, we have square root of 6 over 6, 2 square root of 2, negative square root of 6 over 6, or negative 2 square root of 6. And of course, the last guide question we have, as an overview for our lesson, we are asking for the limits, limits of x raised to 5 as x approaches negative 1 half. Our choices, we have negative 1 over 32, 1 over 32, 2 over 64, or is it negative 2 over 64? Okay, so there you have it guys, as an overview of our lesson. Okay, and don't forget, we are going to answer this one after our discussion. Now, we are now ready on our discussion, but before that, look. Let us recall what are limits. Okay. As what we always say, that nobody is perfect. Do you agree with that? We have our own strengths, but also we have our own weaknesses and limitations. We commit mistakes at times. But as God's creations, we continuously strive for perfection. Guys, did you know that the concept of limits is the fundamental foundation of calculus? This concept actually links the gap between algebra and calculus. So if we define limits, mathematically speaking, it is the intended height of a function. It also describes the behavior of the function at a specific value of x. As we proceed now to the different laws on limits, this will enable us to directly evaluate limits without the need for us to make a table or draw a graph. In the following statements, C is always a constant, F and G are functions which may or may not have C in their domains. Okay, let's have the first limit. The limit of a constant. It states here that the limit of a constant as X approaches to any constant is always equal to the given constant. From the given form, the limit of k as x approaches c is always equal to 
K or K stands for the constant. So for us to fully understand the given law, we have an example here. You are asked here for the limit of negative 0.14 as x approaches 2. So from our first law that the limit of a constant is always equal to the constant itself, the limit of this is simply, yes, you're right. It's zero, negative 0 0.14 because that's the constant. Okay. For the second example, the limit of pi as x approaches negative 1. Again, from the limit of a constant, it is always equal to the constant itself. So we have, yes, the given limit is simply pi. So that's the first law, guys. Limit of a constant. Now, let's proceed with the second law. The limit of an identity function. It states here that the limit of the function x as x approaches to any constant is always equal to the constant as x is simply substituted by c. We are going to substitute it by the c. Okay, now, limit of x as x approaches c is always equal to c. So meaning, when we substitute that, Okay, the value of your x. Okay, that will be now the value of your limit also. From our example here, the limit of x as x approaches negative 0.2. So simply, we are going to substitute the value of your x. And that will be our limit. Okay, so the answer is negative 0.2. Now, how about the second example here? Would you try the limit of x as x approaches 1 fourth. So from our second law, the limit of an identity function, it is simply substituted from the given value of x, which is 1 fourth. So therefore, we have the same answer. Our answer is, yes, it's 1 fourth. The limit of x is equals to 1 fourth. So this is now our second law, the limit of an identity function. Let's proceed with the third law. The limit of a uh, constant and a function. It states here, the limit of a multiple of a function is simply that multiple of the limit of the function. Meaning, in evaluating the limit on a constant and a function, we have the following steps. First one, express the limit as a product of a constant and of course, the limit of a function of x. And then of course, we are going to find the limit of the function x based on the given value for x and of course the last step simplify the resulting numbers again from our given form the limit of c of f of x as x approaches k is that we're going to from the given form here um, rewrite your numerical coefficient which is your c before the given limit formula so c limit of f of k as x approaches k. Then of course, for the limit, you simply get the product of the numerical coefficient and the value of your x. So for us to understand this law, we have here some examples. You are asked here for the limit of 3x as x approaches negative 2. So again, from the given form, your 3 here numerical coefficient of x is simply to be written before the limit. So we have here 3 limit of x as x approaches negative 2. And afterwards, you're going to substitute x here applying our limit of an identity function. So therefore, substitute x with negative 2. So we have here the next step which is 3 times negative 2. Afterwards, we simplify our answer and our answer is negative 6. So simply, our limits is negative 6. Let's have another example and you try this one. Limit of negative 6x as x approaches 1 half. Okay, so from our steps, we simply write your negative 6 as your numerical coefficient before the limit. So there you have negative 6 limit of x as x approaches 1 half. And then afterwards, the next step is we are going to substitute x with this 1 half. So therefore, negative 6 times 1 half. And what's your answer, guys? Yes, you're right. The answer is negative 3. So 
So that is now the limit of this given function. The limit of negative 6x as x approaches 1 half is simply negative 3. That's the, uh, the third law, which is the limit of a constant and a function. Let's proceed with the fourth law. Our fourth law here is the limit of sum and difference of functions. The limit of a sum and difference of functions is the sum and difference of the limits of the individual functions. So meaning, for us to solve for the limits, we have the following steps. Express the limit as sum or difference of functions depending on the number of terms because we are to treat it individually. So depending on the number of terms. Afterwards, we are going to apply the previously discussed laws in finding the limit of its term. And of course, our last step is simply, yes, we are going to simplify. So let's have an example. Okay, our example here is the limit of x plus 5 as x approaches negative 2. So from our steps, we treat these terms by getting its individual limits. Okay, so when we write, we write that one, the limit of x as x approaches negative 2 plus the limit of 5 as x approaches negative 2. What do you observe here? We need to apply the previously discussed laws. So for example, for this first term, we are going to apply the limit of an identity function. Okay, substituting your x with negative 2. For the second term, you notice here that this applies the limit of a constant. So therefore, the limit of this is simply the constant itself. So we have here negative 2 plus 5. As we simplify it further, negative 2 plus 5, yes, the limit is 3. So that is with respect to the limit of sum and difference of functions. Let's try an example, another example. Now, this time you work on this. The limit of negative 3x minus 4 as x approaches 1 third. So from our steps, we need to treat individual limits of its terms. Okay. There you have it, negative 3 limit of x as x approaches 1 third minus the limit of 4 as x approaches 1 third. Do you have the same steps here on our screen? Okay, afterwards applying our previous discussed laws. Okay, for example, this one, the limit of x, we are going to apply the limit of an identity function simply substituting your x with 1 third. And of course, for the constant here is simply applying the limit of constant. So, our next step would be negative 3 times 1 third from substitution of um, x which is 1 third. And of course, the limit of the constant is simply negative 4. Simplifying it further, we have, yes, we have negative 1 because negative 3 times 1 third is simply negative 1. Cancel 3. Okay, and of course, minus 4. So, negative 1 minus 4, therefore, our limit is negative 5. So, there you have it, guys. Our fourth law, which is the limit of sum and difference of functions. Are you ready for the next law? The next law here is the limit of product of functions. The limit of a product of function is equal to the product of their limits. So again, guys, this is similar to the limits of sum and difference of functions with multiplication, replacing, addition, or subtraction as the operation involved. Now, in evaluating the limit of product of functions, the following steps can be followed based from our formula here. Okay? Express the limit in expanded form by applying the limit of products of function. The next one. Evaluate the limit of each function by applying the previously discussed laws. And of course, our last step is simply, yes, simplify our answer. Okay, let's try an example. You're asked here for the limit of 3x and 5. So 3x times 5. Okay, as x approaches 1. So from our Steps a while ago, we treat it individually with respect to the factor. So we have here 3 limit of x as x approaches 1 and the limit of 5 as x approaches 1. So applying our previously discussed laws, we have of course the limit of an identity function, the limit of a constant. 
So for the first factor here, we have 3 times 1. Why 3 times 1? Because your x here is being substituted by 1. And for this factor, the limit of a constant is simply its constant itself, which is 5. So 3 times 1 times 5 equals, yes, that's 15. Okay? Or, of course, we could come up with another uh, solution by um, getting the product of the two factors, 3x times 5, which is what? 15x. Okay? And then afterwards, with that 15x, substitute x with 1, which is 15 times 1. And simply, we have the same answer, which is 15. Okay? Now, let's have the second example. And would you try this one? Okay, the limit of quantity 2x plus 1 times x plus 5 as x approaches negative 2. Okay, let's try from the first step. We need to apply, of course, um, the individual limits of its factor. So we have 2, the limit of x as x approaches negative 2 plus the limit of 1 as x approaches negative 2. This is on the first factor. Okay? For the second factor, x plus 5, the limit of x as x approaches negative 2 plus the limit of 5 as x approaches negative 2. So there you have it, guys. Applying our previous laws from our a limit of an identity function, substitute your value of x with, with the value with negative 2. Okay? So there you have it, guys. So here, as our numerical coefficient and negative 2 as the value of x plus 1 then on the other factor the same also this is negative 2 limit of constant is simply 5 so we have here 5 so there you have it as we simplify it further 2 times negative 2 is negative 4 plus 1 is simply negative 3 negative 2 plus 5 is positive 3 so that's why we have here negative 3 times 3. So our final answer here guys is simply negative 9. So our limit of quantity 2x plus 1 times x plus 5 as x approaches negative 2 is simply negative 9. We have the same answer guys. Hoping you are following with our discussion. Now let's proceed with the sixth law and that is the limit of quotient of functions. It states here the limit of the quotient of functions is equal to the quotient of the limits of the individual functions provided that take note this guys the denominator limit is not equal to zero should not be equal to zero to because once it is equal to zero it will become undefined okay so from the given steps here also from the form we have here on our screen Okay. In evaluating the limit of quotients of functions, the following steps can be followed. The first step, express the limit in an expanded form by applying the limit of quotients of function. Second step, we are going to evaluate the limit of its function by applying the previously discussed laws. And of course, last step, simplify. Let's have an example here, guys. We are asked here for the limit of x over 2 as x approaches 5. So from our first step, we treat the numerator and then the denominator determining its limits. So we have the limit of x as x approaches 5 all over, of course, the denominator, the limit of 2 as x approaches 5. You notice here, guys, that we are going to apply the previously discussed laws, particularly the limit of an identity function and of course, applying also the limit of constant. So for the numerator, we simply substitute 5 to your x. And of course, for the denominator, this is the limit of a constant. So simply the limit of this, limit of 2 as x approaches 5, is always equal to the constant, which is 2. So 5 over 2. So therefore, this is already our final answer. As we notice that it's already simplified. So 5 over 2. So the limit of x over 2 as x approaches 5 is simply 5 over 2. Now, let's try another example. For this second example, you try also solving on your answer sheets. Okay. The limit of x plus 5 all over 3x minus 2 as x approaches 2. Okay. 
So again, from our steps, we treat the numerator, apply its term, its individual limits, the same true with the denominator, applying also its individual limits. So we have here the form. The limit of x as x approaches 2 plus the limit of 5 as x approaches 2 all over 3 limit of x as x approaches 2 minus limit of 2 as x approaches 2. So there you have it guys, applying the uh, limits from your numerator, individual term, applying your limits on your denominator with respect to its individual term. Okay, applying this time our different laws discussed from our previous discussion, okay, we have, of course, there you have it guys, y2 here because we simply substitute x with 2. This is now the limit of an identity function. Why this is 5? Because limit of a constant. Limit of 5 is simply 5 itself. Again, on the denominator, why is it 3 times 2? Because of course, a numerical coefficient, you just copy, substitute your value of x, which is 2. So we have 3 times 2. Then of course, limit of a constant, limit of 2, as x approaches 2 is simply equals to 2. So, this is now our second step. And last step, we simplify both numerator and then the denominator. So 2 plus 5 here is 7. Yes. 3 times 2 is 6 minus 2 is simply 4. So our final answer here is 7 over 4. Therefore, our limit of x plus 5 all over 3x minus 2 as x approaches 2 is, yes, it's 7 over 4. So that is now our sixth law, which is the limit of quotient of functions. Are you still there, guys, following? Okay, we're on the seventh law. The limit of power of functions. The limit of an integer power of n of a function is just that power of the limit of the function. Okay, so from the given form here, the limit of f of x raised to n as x approaches to k is simply you notice there the limit of f of k raised to n as x approaches to k so for us to illustrate this law we have here the first example the limit of x raised to 4 as x approaches 2 okay so what will you do here guys we simply substitute your given value of x which is 2 so the limit of 2 raised to 4 as x approaches to 2 so 2 raised to 4 what is 2 raised to 4 guys yes that is 16 so simply the limit of x raised to 4 as x approaches to the answer here is 16 okay next would you try this one guys the limit of 3x raised to 4 plus 9x squared as x approaches negative 3. So, simply treat um, each term individually with respect to its limits, applying the previously discussed laws. So, there you have it. So, 3, the limit of negative 3. Why is negative 3? You are going to substitute x with negative 3. The same true here. We have 9, the limits of negative 3, raised to 2 as x approaches negative 3. So, we're going to simplify it further from each term. So, negative 3 raised to 4. Okay. And take note here, guys, that it is an even number. So, therefore, it's positive. So, we have 81. 81 times 3. The same true here. Negative 3 squared, it's 9. Then, we have 9 times 9. Simplifying it further, 3 times 81 is 243. 9 times 9, it's 81. So, 243 plus 81 is equals to 324. This is now our limit of the given function 3x raised to 4 plus 9x squared as x approaches negative 3. The answer is 324. Do you follow guys? And do you have the same answer also? Okay. Next, we have here the last law. The limit of root of functions. It states here, if n is a positive integer, the limit of the nth root of a function is just the nth root of the limit of the function. 
provided that the nth root of the limit is a real number. Okay? Meaning your index is a real number. So the limit, we have here the form, the limit of um, the nth root of x, uh, f of x, as x approaches k is equals to the nth root of the limit of f of k as x approaches k as to simplify it further okay applying our previous loss also so we have here the limit of 3x cube root of x as x approaches 27 okay so substitute x with 27 the same true here also on your radical sign so there you have it 3 limit of 27 as x approaches 27 the same true here with 27 okay simplifying the first factor so 3 times 27 then of course cube root of 27 so 3 times 27 is 81 then of course cube root of 27 is simply 3 okay 81 times 3 further as we simplify it we have 243 so the limit of 3x cube root of x as x approaches 27 is simply 243 now will you try this one the limit of the square root of 3x square minus 2x plus 8 as x approaches 2 okay guys we have here the 3 uh, square root of the 3 limit of 2 raised to 2 as x approaches 2. Individual limits of its term with respect to negative 2x, it becomes negative 2 limit of 2 as x approaches 2. And of course, the last term, applying your limit of constant, limit of 8 as x approaches 2. Simplifying it further, individual terms. So there you have it, 2 squared, there you have then 2 times 2 with this, and then of course 8. 2 is square is 4 times 3 is 12. Negative 2 times 2 is negative 4, and then plus 8. So 12 minus 4 plus 8, we have 16. Extract the root of that. So square root of 16 is simply 4. So the limit of square root of 3x squared minus 2x plus 8 as x approaches 2 is simply equals to 4. Okay, guys, we are through now with our eight laws of limits. To sum up or wrap up our discussion, we have the different laws on limits, which we have, uh, we have discussed a while ago, which enable us to directly evaluate limits without for us to make a table or a graph. So, what are those again for the limit laws? We have the limit of a constant limit of an identity function, limit of a constant and a function, limit of sum and difference of functions, limit of product of functions, limit of quotient of functions, and limit of uh, power of functions. And lastly, we have the limit of root of functions. Okay? A while ago, I have presented some questions as an overview of our topic. Do you still remember the five questions? Let us try now to answer that. Okay. The first question here is, which of the following laws describe the given formula? So from the given formula, the limit of f of x over g of x as x approaches a, which is equals to the limit of f of x as x approaches a, all over the limit of g of x as x approaches a. From the choices, guys, would you try? Which is the best answer there? Okay, you're right. The correct answer is limit of quotient of functions. Let's proceed the second question. Which of the following laws states that if n is a positive integer, the limit of the nth root of a function is just the nth root of the limit of the function, provided that the nth root of the limit is a real number? Okay, guys, what's your answer? Yes, you're right. The answer is limit of root of functions. Congratulations, guys. Next, third question. You're asking for the limits of 
x squared minus 4x plus 3 all over x minus 1 as x approaches 2. Okay? What could be the limit of this function? Yes, the correct answer, guys, is we have negative 1. So simply applying our different loss being discussed a while ago, and of course, substitu substitution from our given value of x. So our correct answer is negative 1. How about the fourth question here? The limits of, yes, the square root of x cubed minus 2x squared plus 5x all over x plus 9 as x approaches 3. What will be your answer, guys? Okay. Oh. So the correct answer here is we have the square root of 6 over 6. Okay. Do you have, do you have the same answer? Okay. And of course, lastly, guys, you are asking for the limits of x raised to 5 as x approaches to negative one half. What will be your answer? Okay, the correct answer here is yes, we have negative 1 over 32. So that, there you have it, guys. Um, from our uh, discussions, now it's your turn to accomplish an activity. Okay, go to this link. We have https colon double slash forms that GLE slash rx 32 zwju 9 mfsd one q u a And of course, uh, follow the instructions there for the activity on limits. Okay. After doing this activity, I hope you have jotted down our link. You are now ready also for our assignment. I'll be giving you an assignment. For our assignment, Using the Padlet, go to this link, https colon double slash padlet.com slash Moises Flores 1 slash limits. Okay? And then in your respective section, okay, column, click the plus sign. There you have it, the plus sign. And then, of course, you're going to write or share your significant learning, your reaction, or reflection on what we have discussed today which is the loss on limits and of course do not forget to indicate your name if you didn't have an account in this padlet okay guys that is now our assignment now um, after, you, after you have copied the link that ends now our modular learning for the subject basic calculus Quarter 3, Week 1, Lesson 3. Thank you for listening and hoping you have learned something today. Have a nice day and see you again on the next lesson for another exciting and comprehensive discussion on our topic. Thank you guys.